Hello, my name is Emily, as you may or may not know, and long ago, I trekked into a faraway land that I dared not venture again into. Until now. <laughs> That's right, everybody, we're going back to the land of dark romance. <laughs> romance that makes you go... <sighs> you know, romance that instead of making you go, aww, it makes you go, huh. Now, like I said in my first video, I get that dark romance is fiction and everybody has their own tastes and whatnot um, and fantasies and this or that and it doesn't always, you know, correlate with what you want in real life. But, you know, today we aren't here to psychoanalyze. We are simply here to have a gag and a giggle uh, at some of these dark romance posts. So maybe I'll make a more in-depth video about, you know, the implications of it all. I apologize if you just heard my stomach growl like uh, a bear waking up from hibernation. Hopefully my voice was loud enough to cover it. Um, but yeah, you know, let's just look at some of these dark romance posts and see if we get swept off of our feet. Because a man is abducting us and he's kidnapping us. When she asks about his best friend and he angrily asks, Why? Him being mean to her because he likes her. So this seems to be a pretty big theme in these dark romance, you know, books. You know, being mean to somebody that you like. Which, you know, that's something that's um, even outside of dark romance. You know, even like with kids and when there's like a little boy who's, you know, force feeding his crush sidewalk chalk. You know, the parents are just like, oh, well, you know, that's, he just has a crush. And you know, honestly, that's so real. Whenever I have feelings for a woman, I make sure to deeply mistreat her in a way that makes her question if love is even real. The last time I had a, um, a crush on a woman, I actually uh, laced her protein drinks with laxatives and flushed her antidepressants down the toilet. You know, whenever I have a strong emotional connection with a woman and I'm thinking to myself, you know, she could be the one. There's only one thing left that I have to do. Put black mold in her vents. But for real, the whole like being mean to someone that you like or whatnot, I just, you know, if someone is being mean to me as a way to pursue me, I'm not gonna be thinking like, oh, like I think maybe I'm interested in this person too because they're relentlessly bullying me. No, what I'm gonna think is go to hell. Go to hell and take the scenic route. Her casually mentioning that she's allergic to peaches and then faking a cough. Him. Who fed her peaches? Love that she just coughs the tiniest bit and then he's like, Anaphylaxis! Who did this to her? She just has like the common cold and he's like, Where is your happy pen? Excuse me. 911! Someone call 911! Like, babe, I think you're jumping to conclusions here a little bit. You know, me at a restaurant with my girlfriend and she says, Oh, my tummy hurts a little bit. I storm into the kitchen with a knife and point it at the chefs and say, Which one of you poisoned her? Listen, I don't think the peaches are the culprit here, okay? She's probably coughing and gagging and spewing up spit because you smell like a garbage disposal full of solidified bile. But thank God we have today's sponsor to help us with that problem, Scentbird. Thank you, Scentbird, for sponsoring today's video. With Scentbird this year, you can find your signature scent or you can find a new one. Literally, I cannot leave the house without spritzing some of my Scentbird perfume because maybe I've just Pavlovian dogged myself into thinking that I can't go out into public without spritzing it. Um, but also, you know, I just, obviously I like to smell good. I would rather smell good than rancid. Uh, and whenever someone tells me that I smell good, it adds five years to my lifespan, believe it or not. So with Scentbird, <laughs> I'm gonna be immortal, baby. The fragrances that I got this time were Dead Cool Fragrance Number 3, Christian Siriano Ula Rouge Exclusive, Oh my god. Dolce & Gabbana 3 La Imperatrice and Roja London Elixir. My top two were the Roja London Elixir and Dolce & Gabbana 3 La Imperatrice. Roja London's Elixir smells like vanilla, amber, combining with a lively rose, raspberry, and peach to create a weightless aura. This scent is very fresh, it's very feminine, and as a femme, I love to be fresh and feminine. <laughs> Dolce & Gabbana's 3 La Imperatrice smells like electric pink fireworks of tart kiwi, rhubarb, ripe watermelon, and delicate cyclamen. 
It's bright, it's fruity, which I love, hey, and it makes me feel like I'm getting ready for spring. Scentbird offers such a variety of different perfumes and colognes, you can be sure to experiment and find the perfect scent for you. There are plenty of unisex options, and some of these fragrances are valued over $150, some of them even $300 to $500. With Scentbird, you get a fragrance subscription service to save you from buying a full bottle of a perfume that you might not even like. Every month, Scentbird allows you to try new designer fragrances for just $17 a month. With each fragrance, you'll get a 30-day supply, so that way you can try it out before deciding if you want to buy the full bottle or not. So make sure to click the link below to go to Scentbird's website or scan the QR code and use my code, not even Emily 55 to get 55% off your first month at Scentbird. That's only about $8 for your first month. $8 for designer fragrances, y'all. And thank you again to Scentbird for sponsoring today's video. Well, now let us continue our journey into what some may describe as goals. And if you do describe it as goals, I plead the fifth, I'm staying silent. When she tells the school psycho she's saving herself for marriage, so he marries her in high school. Life hack! Oh, you're saving yourself for marriage. Oh, that's great, how valiant. Um, but I wanna have sex now, so we'll get married now? Or we can do that thing that Mormons do, where they, they kick the bed for you. <laughs> have y'all ever heard of that? It's crazy! Wanting to get laid so badly, being so gut-wrenchingly horn e, that you're like, screw it, walk down that aisle, girl. Don't walk, sprint. I need you to hurdle over the guest because, well, you know. You're in the middle of your vows and he's like, God, these are so long. Like, you cut to the chase, I have blue balls. Okay, for better or for worse, how about for blue or for balls, okay? Enough yapping, my neener is harder than the math part of the SAT. When he rules the school, but his separation anxiety is at an all-time high, him sending his brothers to drag her out of class because he misses her. Imagine being in the middle of geometry class and then two guys bust into the classroom and then they drag you out like bouncers when you're too drunk at the club. You know, just like, yeah, no, you gotta go. You're in the middle of an exam that's worth a quarter of your grade and then these guys come in and they're like, drop the Scantron, bitch. Papa Bear's missing his honey. And you're like, what? Like, again? Like, I have a 1.6 GPA because of this motherfucker. When she shows up to a party in disguise, expecting no one will recognize her, her enemy following her around like a lost puppy. The way I would be so irritated, like I have on a whole ass disguise, okay? The whole nine, fake mustache, trench coat. And then I just have this guy following behind me like, hi. I enter the witness protection program. I get plastic surgery. I join the RCTA community and change my race. I gain 150 pounds. And then my enemy still shows up and is like, oh, Emily, hey, is that you? Also, if this person is my enemy, like, why are you attached to my hip? Like, don't we hate each other? Get away from me. But also, I guess they do say to keep your friends close, but your enemies closer. Yeah. Though this guy, he, it's, it's too, it's, he's too close. If he gets any closer, you might as well be a tapeworm living in my gut. Like, okay, you're my enemy, but you're acting like you're my newborn baby with the umbilical cord still attached, you know? Oh, that is horrid. I just had a vision of, like, me walking around with a newborn baby with the, my umbilical cord still attached and dragging it around like it's on like a leash or something. Anyways, let's go to the next one. Her shocked when the bad boy comes over to feed her soup when she's sick. You belong to me and I always take care of my property. I don't have pearls, but if I had pearls, I would be clutching them. Haha, <laughs> yeah! So romantic. You know, he's got that, uh that pre-19th Amendment riz. I love when a man refers to me as his property. <laughs> I actually prefer if the man doesn't even know my name at all, and instead he just calls me item number seven. Place item in the bagging area. And what's the item that he's placing in the bagging area at the self-checkout at Target? It's me. And guess what? I was on clearance. Him introducing me to his friends like, yeah, this is my lovely girlfriend. Object 6,174. When he looks me in the eyes, I'm thinking, oh, he must be thinking about how much he loves me. Meanwhile, he's just taking inventory. When the school psycho suffers from separation anxiety. Here we go again. Him following her around, even when she goes to the bathroom. 
pulling me out of my education, following me to the shitter. It's like, is nothing sacred around here? Me saying I need to take a shit and then he gets up too? Baby, no, 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 no. That is not an invitation. It's a pardon me. <sighs> Them being cramped in the same public bathroom stall while her butthole is sputtering like a malfunctioning engine. <sighs> so dreamy. Baby, you know I just can't be away from you. And before he can even finish his sentence, her ass is beatboxing. You know how they say farting in front of your significant other is like some sort of milestone in the relationship? Shitting in front of your significant other? Your significant other hearing the melody of the plop plop plops that you are inducing? That's practically an engagement. Oh, how did your boyfriend propose? He actually didn't get down on one knee. He got down on the toilet and sharted. Uh, yeah. No words even had to be exchanged and I knew what he meant. It was a shard that transcended language. When she gets a scholarship to a private school but she can't even afford lunch, him secretly upgrading her meal card. Okay, this is the only one where I'm like, this is actually nice. He's like, I can't watch this girl eat another sale on Crustable. <laughs> He's like, I've been watching this girl eat the same bag of lime Takis for three days in a row. I feel sorry for her. And you know, in the other video I did about this, the, they were wa seemingly wanting us to starve. Like they were stealing our lunches a lot and stuff like that and making fun of us for being poor. So this seems to be, you know, a step ahead in the right direction. He cut his hands off because he touched her. Okay, one step forward and two steps back. Very normal and well-adjusted response. You know, I love that quality in a man. Uh, violent. If another man ever touches me, beware, okay? Because that's my boyfriend's cue for Benihana time. I actually fainted in the middle of the road one time and this very kind elderly man helped me up and stopped me from getting hit by a Ford F-150. And then of course my boyfriend had to repay this man by giving him an amputation. <sighs> that's my man. I unfortunately have to say this because of copyright, whatever, la la la, it doesn't matter, la la la, oh well. Bitch, you better be joking. Yeah, totally. I can excuse first degree murder and federal crimes, but I draw the line at swiping up on another woman's Instagram story. You know, sure, he might have illegal weapons and dismembered body parts in the back of his car, but you know what else he has? Loyalty. And that's the most important. This also seems to be another trend in the dark romance community, you know, being okay with theoretically, being okay with violence, assault, and crime, but if he cheats, have some decorum. Y'all, I gotta sing again. Sorry. In a world of boys, he's a gentleman. He stalks her and he also kidnaps her. He does other things like he insults her and another thing, he wants to steal her soul. Guys, chivalry is not dead. <laughs> but it is on hospice. Someone's like, oh, how did you meet your boyfriend? And you're like, oh, it's a super cute story. I'll have to send you the episode of Dateline that they did on us. Imagine this couple being YouTubers and they're doing like the how we met challenge and then the entire video can just be used in a court of law. All the comments are like loving this new true crime content and they're like, huh? She spends hours baking cookies to win him over, but he accuses her of bribing him and she leaves his place in tears. He's overcome with guilt and he goes outside to see that she's been hit by a car. Oh my God, that has to be like one of the worst things. If you, if you feel guilty about the way that you treated someone and then you go to apologize to them and you see that they've been flattened by an anvil on the sidewalk, it's like, Me after someone was mean to me. Oh, you didn't like my cookies? How about I fling myself into oncoming traffic? I cook him dinner and he's like, you know what, the pot roast, it was a little bit salty. And then I proceed to walk directly into the ocean and I never turn around or come back except to haunt you in your dreams. Also love how he calls the cookies a bribe. You know, I mean, I guess they, they could be considered a bribe, but you know, just the businesses that these men tend to be in, it, it feels like a cookie would not be a sufficient enough bribe. You know, like, oh, you won't hide this dead body for me and harvest the organs? Well, I got three words for you, buddy. Oat, meal, raisin. She wakes up to an escaped convict in her bed. He was planning the rest of their lives together while watching her sleep. Huh? I literally 
beg thee of thy pardon. Like, please leave me alone. I... <laughs> That truly sounds like a complete and utter nightmare. Okay, waking up in my bed that's supposed to be my solace and solitude, and then a man is there? If I ever make a horror movie, it's gonna be about five seconds. I wake up, turn to my left, and then a male is there, roll the credits. Jump scare to the utmost degree, okay? And listen, I'm not like a lesbian man hater. Like, I think that some men are great. I have a lot of male friends. I would, I would feel the same if there was a random woman in my bed. If it was, if it was, it may be depending on the... <laughs> of course, if I woke up to a random woman in my bed, I would still be very scared. But if she happened to be a very beautiful, alluring woman, I would be scared at first, but then maybe after I'd be like, so... Do you want to get breakfast? <laughs> She's mad at him because she let his girl best friend touch him. Always beware of the girl best friend. And he didn't even notice, and he asks her, where does she touch me? She brushes his arm, still pissed. Here. He pulls out his dagger and slices the skin off of his arm. See, now, ladies, this is how you know he truly cares. My man carries around a potato peeler everywhere, on his person, just in case another woman accidentally touches him. He can just peel the skin right off. You know, the other day he wanted to get a massage, but there were only female masseuses, so I said, listen, I'm okay with it as long as you bring your peeler with you. And then he got a really great relaxing massage. However, he did come back to the apartment looking like this. When he says he's jealous, but Rennick decreed that every man in the kingdom with blonde hair has to shave it until they're married because he found out that she likes blondes. That's pretty intense, doing all of that just because she likes blondes. Imagine if this woman was bisexual. You wouldn't be able to let her near any sorority in the South. Literally just the biggest congregation of blonde people. All of you in Alpha Beta Phi, you must shave your heads. You can keep the Lululemon in the Stanley Cups, but that scalp better be shining bright like a diamond. Sounds like a really responsible king. You know, just making legislation based off of your own insecurities. The next law he makes is like, I hereby decree that all men in the kingdom must have their penis size reduced to three inches or less or face execution. All men in the kingdom must be no taller than six feet or we shall remove your femurs. She thinks her golden retriever boyfriend's cheating on her because he's been distant. Her walking in on him with blood spotted on his shirt and a half dead man cuffed to his radiator. What are you doing here? He breathes. What are, what you, are doing you doing here? here? Oh, he's not a golden retriever. He's an alpha, an alpha wolf, unfortunately. Walking into the room like, oh my god, I thought you were cheating on me. Thank god you're just running a torture chamber in your living room. My boyfriend surprised me with the cutest DIY stay-at-home date. All you need is a victim. Age gap. 26 versus 136. Talk about a cougar. Okay, this cougar's got her paws out, and guess what? They're arthritic. Imagining these two having a conversation is crazy, you know? He's like, who did you vote for? And she says, William Howard Taft. So, what do you like to do for fun? Oh, um, you know, I like to play games. Oh, okay, cool, me too. What games do you play? I love playing Call of Duty. Oh, you know, I like to hit a hoop with a wooden stick. Or sometimes, you know, me and my childhood friends would have butter churning races. He's been looking extra fine and she's been wanting some. The sum, I'm assuming, is sex. Uh, but she doesn't know how to initiate. So she slaps him across the face because she knows that gets him hot in the act. You know that show about Gypsy Rose Blanchard. Then she realizes that context exists and that she just slapped him in the middle of his workout. What did I do? He whispers. This all just happening in a Planet Fitness. And yeah, she really does not know how to initiate, you know, no subtle touches or sweet nothings, just a grand slam. Whenever I get really turned on, I do this thing where I throw a folding chair at my partner. Okay, well, that is enough for today. Uh, I hope you all enjoyed today's video. It's always, uh, really enlightening and um, illuminating experience to delve into the dark romance. Sorry, I was just about to burp. But yeah, I hope you all enjoyed this video. I hope we all had a gag and a giggle. And let me know any other things that you want me to react to. Uh, different, you know, I don't know, You like for, for these types of videos uh, where I'm just kind of looking at stuff and yapping. Thank you for watching and until next time and real quick I want to show you guys this dress I got because I think it's so cute.
it's a cute little white dress and this oh yeah so this is my uh my ring light set up uh, my cute little dress and later I'm going to go into the park and loiter. So yeah Okay Bye until next time